then you're intolerant and your religion is wrong. We've constructed a supposed anti-authority, anti-religious religion. We know we're messed up, but we're not sinners. We're deeply wounded people who have many emotional needs. Therefore, to say that Jesus Christ died on the cross to satisfy the wrath of God, if you want to believe that in the mental checklist of your mind, that's fine. But that's not really what religion should be about. Religion is about helping us feel better. And so long as your faith does that, as long as it seems to be working, let's not argue about the details. You put it like this in one sentence. Religion is what helps you feel good and be good. Religion is what helps you feel good and be good. Those are the two gifts that faith gives you. Everything else is just fancy paper, pretty bows. Feel good, be good. So whatever, okay, you want to, you want, you Christians, you got your whatever about two natures and three persons and your Trinitarian. Okay, that, that's cool. As long as your faith is really just about being good and feeling good. And insofar as all faith can be reduced to that, then how dare you say that your expression of it is better, truer, unique, or that somehow people go to hell if they don't do things your way? No. Religion is about feeling good and being good. And what happens then in too many Christian churches without realizing, it's not that Christian churches take they don't usually take the old statement of faith and say, eh, rip it up, let's change it. But imperceptibly, they breathe in this air. Religion is personalized, psychologized, pragmatized. And unwittingly, they conclude if we can't beat them, join them. And so religion becomes something entirely felt on the inside. And religion is no longer to solve the problem of objective guilt it's to remove the feelings of subjective shame and inadequacy. It's not to mortify the flesh and make us alive in Christ. It's to help us cope with life, give us strategies to help find the God within. So religion becomes utilitarian. Religious language is used to describe not so much God as the self, and the God to appease is not some eternal God in the heavens, but your own sense of inadequacy, your own sense of shame. And this happens very subtly. Pastors don't even realize that they've, they, they've never, they never say, I no longer believe these things, but they shift because they can intuit the sort of gospel people want to hear, which is entirely an interior, interior gospel that helps people come to grips with their own bad feelings. Now, that's not entirely inaccurate because we are meant to have freedom and joy in Christ and overcome feelings of guilt and shame. Yes, the cross does all of that. But when we so tailor our message so that there's no objective guilt, there's no vertical dimension, there's no God outside of ourself, we've lost the heart and the uniqueness of the Christian message. Christian exclusivism, therefore, isn't just wrong. It's really beside the point. It doesn't even make sense. It's intolerant and offensive, but it also just seems completely unnecessary. Learn to feel good and to be good, and you've found God. That's what most people their default religious impulse is. And we have to help deconstruct that. And it's not just deconstructing to say, You're, that's wrong, here's what's right, but it's also to help them show, here's what's half right about what you're saying, but here's why the Christian gospel is only, that the Christian gospel is going to solve the deeper problem that's in your life. Yes, you're right to feel a sense of inadequacy and like something's not right in your life, but there's a deeper problem and it can't be explained just with a horizontal dimension or an interior dimension. It's vertical. Against God only have I sinned. Personalized, psychologized, pragmatized. 